Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome to the beginning Cloud Kit video tutorial series. This series is going to teach you how to leverage the Cloud Kit framework into your own apps so that your users can switch devices and still have access to their data. Cloud Kit has a lot of moving parts and in this video, I'm going to break it all down for you. Before we go any further, let's take a moment to ask ourselves, what is Cloud Kit? You'll be happy to hear that it's not the sound of one server clapping. Rather, it is often referred to as a transport medium. Its job is to move data from Apple's servers to your own app, and of course, from your own app and back to Apple's servers. In essence, it's a technology that powers services such as iCloud, iCloud Drive, and iCloud-centric apps like Notes. It allows you to organize your data in much like a database and serve it to your users on demand. In essence, your app gets a data backend so that your user's data will persist from device to device without them having to do a thing. As mentioned, CloudKit is a framework that is composed of many different parts. The first part is called a container. Each app has a container and everything for your app in CloudKit exists in within that container. Containers hold three databases, a public, a private and a shared database. These databases contain all of your users' data. The public database is available to everyone. The private database is only available to the user and the shared database is a database that is composed of data that was shared from other users. Record zones live inside of databases. These zones are where you group your data. The data itself is stored in what is called a record. Records are composed of a variety of different types these, these data types are limited, but they should be more than enough to model the structure, the data structure of your apps. Essentially, you get your database from the container, from the database you query and save to, to specific zones. Data is organized by record, so you can either save records or read, read to them from the database. These records are modeled from record types, and well, that's the framework. Okay, okay, there's a little bit more to it. All right, there's a lot more to it, but that should be enough to get you started. Looks great, you say, but how much? CloudKit has a per user quota. Exceed that quota and you will be charged. Thankfully, CloudKit scales, so as you acquire more users, so does your quota increase. You only have to worry about this quota in the public database. For any data saved in a user's private or shared database, that data is counted against their own personal iCloud account. To get the latest information about usage and specific charges, head over to developer.apple.com slash iCloud slash CloudKit. This course is broken down into 11 parts. First, you'll learn how to incorporate CloudKit into your app. You'll learn how to access the container and then the databases. Next, you'll learn about the CloudKit dashboard and how it is used to monitor usage and model data. Then you'll learn how to save records to your database. Of course, once you save your data, you'll want to, you want to know how to read it back. Next, you'll learn how to create relationships between your data by means of references. Subscriptions will let you know when data has changed. Then we'll dive into operations. Operations give you better control over how you save your data and also how you can batch records for both reading and writing. After operations, you'll learn how to deal with eventual, eventual conflicts that may arise. Then you'll learn about user accounts and how, and we'll end the series on how to share data. So as you can see, there is a lot to cover. While CloudKit is not an advanced technology, it does have some prerequisites. First, you should be an intermediate iOS developer and fluent in Swift. If not, check out our intro courses such as beginning to Swift, intermediate Swift, and advanced Swift. Next, you should have a good understanding of concurrency and working with operation queues. If you need to brush up on these concepts, check out our series on concurrency. That should quickly get you up to speed. It may help for you to watch our networking with URL session video tutorial series as well. While you won't be directly, directly using URL session, you will be dealing with networks and all the headaches they present. These courses will give you an understanding of the challenges necessary when using CloudKit. As you can see, we have a lot of ground to cover in CloudKit. 
Thankfully, it's a fun API and provides a whole lot of power to your app. This course will lay the groundwork for you, and by the end of it, you'll be able to leverage CloudKit to create a customizable server backend without the hassles of building your own. Well, I hope you enjoyed this introduction. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.